the question that, that I want to go to is more is towards common filters. So how much do you rely on, say, a star tracker versus a magnetometer as far as being able to determine your attitude? And also, does, does it matter at what point in the mission you are? Because as you said, um, things can happen to the camera where it can make it less reliable. So mm -hmm. yeah, so does that change over time? And how does that whole process go of determining how much I trust one sensor over another? Yeah, so I mean, there's the general idea of Kalman filtering or like statistical estimation that um, I don't know. I could talk on this forever. I don't want to take too much time, so I'm gonna I'm gonna relate it back to what we did on A6, for example. So, in in a Kalman filter, you are you have a mathematical representation of your system, a mathematical model in the form of you know state space equations or something, and using that model you are predicting future state. You're estimating what the system is doing over time without, without looking. And it'd be like um, similar to being in your bedroom, closing your eyes and walking to your kitchen. You have a pretty good understanding of the map of your house. And because you can feel how you're walking and moving, you can estimate where you are. But the longer that you're estimating where you are, the less certain you become in your accuracy. I think you can easily walk straight out of your bedroom door without running into anything and being fairly confident. But now if you turn, did you turn 90 degrees or a little bit less? I don't know. And you walk a little bit further and a little bit further. And eventually this estimate, you trust less and less and less, right? And that's what this mathematical model is doing for us is it is essentially saying, well, I was rotating at this rate and in this direction before, so in one second, I should be whatever, you know, a little bit further. And I've estimated that. And one second later, I should be a little bit further. And the longer you go predicting and estimating your future state, the less confidence you have in it. So then occasionally, let's go back to walking across the house. Um, you get halfway there and you're like, I, I feel like I'm going to hit a wall. I'm just not confident that I know exactly where I am. Let me just open my eyes real quick. You reorient yourself. You're like, ah, here's where I am. And then you can close your eyes and keep walking. And that's essentially what we're doing with a star tracker is we're opening our eyes occasionally and saying, where are we actually? And then the Kalman filter combines those two estimates, the one that we predicted with a model and the one that we sensed using a sensor. Um, with the case of your eyes, your eyes are probably pretty accurate. So you would trust them a whole bunch when you reorient yourself, unless maybe, you know, you, you wear glasses, you don't have your glasses on, it's like a fuzzy world, right? You may not, you may have some error in your sensors. Well, on our spacecraft, we do have errors. The star tracker isn't perfect, our estimate's not perfect, and the Kalman filter is a way to blend these two imperfect estimations, one estimated from a sensor, one estimated from a model, blend it together to get a good state estimate. Now, how that estimation well, not how it's done, but how much do you trust your prediction and how much do you trust your sensor? Um, you, you can bake into the Kalman filter ahead of time by knowing how good you built your model and by knowing how good your sensors are. But in the case of star trackers and other sensors that degrade over time, you can change how your, your, your sensor um, noise like how, how much noise there is in the sensor real time. So with a star tracker, I said like, if you can see four stars, that estimate is not going to be as good as one if you can see 16 stars. Imagine 16 stars and you can match that pattern into your star catalog, you're gonna have a lot of confidence that you're looking at the right thing. And each one of those errors of each of those stars is gonna kind of blend together and, and RSS root, root sum square out of there. And you're gonna have a better estimate of where you're pointing versus four. So the star tracker comes back with a, its own guess as to how good it's doing based on how many stars it sees and how fast the spacecraft is rotating. Because you can also imagine that when the shutter is open on this camera, if the stars are sort of streaking across because you're rotating, you don't have these nice point stars. You now have these streaks. And you think, okay, well, I can still centroid on that streak and say it was in the middle of that streak, but were you rotating at a fixed rate? If not, then it's not the center, you know, so, so rotating a spacecraft 
while doing star tracking decreases its error. So you can take all of that information and then how long you've been you know, operating, like one month later, three months later, four months later, you might start to degrade your sensor just because, um, just because, like I said, with these hot pixels and dead pixels and stuff. So you can take all of that information and you can put that into your Kalman filter and say, this is how much I trust my star tracker. And this is how much I trust my model. And this is how much I trust whatever sensor, other sensors are going into it, my magnetometers or whatever. And, and the beauty of, uh, of a Kalman filter is that it takes into, all, into account all of those statistical distributions and comes back with an optimal estimate given all of that information. So as long as your information going into it is accurate, what's going to come out is the optimal estimate that, that blends all of those statistical uncertainties and everything. 